Shut up and sit down. Hi everyone, this is Tony Day. Uh, I'm not going to script this one, I'm just going to talk about this. It's, uh, I guess I'll call it like ramblings or something about uh, stuff to know for, you know, if you want to buy the Blackmagic Pocket 4K, which is going to be a really cool camera. I can't wait to get mine. I already have mine pre-ordered and everything. And this all came up because I was talking with a colleague of mine about storage that I was going to need for shooting some higher end stuff that I'm planning on doing. I'm going to probably use this camera, maybe some of the other Blackmagic design cameras to do it, assuming that I get this camera in time to do what I want to do. When I was talking to him, he, he shoots HD. I like shoot 4K because it's easier for me. He shoots HD for a bunch of stuff and he seemed to not really understand the storage requirements of something like this. Shooting, you know, 4K ProRes in the basic ProRes codex or even in the LT codec and shooting raw uh, compressed 3.1 for example. He just didn't understand how crazy it could be on your storage. So what I want to do is go through this with you guys and gals and uh, just talk about the, the kinds of storage that you're, you're probably going to need in order to do this. Full disclosure on anything, I'm not paid to do this. I'm not doing this to sell anything. If you look below, I have no links to buy anything. The whole point of this is to just try to give you information on what you might be getting into if you buy this. And this camera, it has a potential to, to really kind of change the market because it's a small, affordable, at $1,300 professional looking camera, assuming that it does everything that they promise that it can do, which Blackmagic, eh, sometimes they do it, sometimes they don't. I mean, usually their cameras have just caveats that you got to get into. Um, you know, battery life might suck, but you know, when I was shooting film, you had to, you know, change it every few minutes in the dark bag anyway. So swapping out a battery just never seemed a big deal to me as long as you get the image quality that you're expecting and that you want. And it's marketed, it looks like it's being marketed to a lot of people who may not really understand the demands of professional looking video. So with that all out of the way, um, let's just let's just get into this thing, okay? I saw a lot of people talking about this and some of them are people who are shooting very low end cameras and they want to upgrade. Totally makes sense, right? So um, let me just go, so I've been scrolling through this a while, so you, you know, just go to the website, go to blackmagicdesign.com to kind of look at what it does. Pretty cool. Um, if you're already on this video, you probably already know all this crap. So we're gonna go to the tech specs, okay? And there's all this stuff that, you know, yeah, it's great. It's got like all these controls and stuff. You probably already know all that. But what I want to talk about in this video is the um, media storage. Okay. Now, just as a comparison, a lot of people are using the GH5, which has a 400 megabit per second codec. Let's take that megabits per second and let's divide it by eight to get how many megabytes per second you're talking. Okay. It's 50. So you're getting 50 megabytes per second of data going into your card. Now, what I noticed is that even when the GH5 and the GH5S had, had come out, and I was really thinking about getting either of these cameras before this camera came out, people were complaining about their memory cards and like smack talking all kinds of companies and cards in reviews and on the web and to me in person. And I'm like, dude, you don't know what you're doing. That's the problem. Okay, so let's go to B and H, and I just did a search for SD card, right? And the top one on the list is this 3450, very inexpensive SanDisk Extreme Pro. Good brand, you know, uh, reliable. 64 gigs seems like a lot. Um, it's called Extreme. It's got that three. It's got the ten. You know, it looks amazing. And then, you know, you see it goes, hey, look, 4K video, right? Like, awesome. But here's the trick, okay? You see this V30, all right? Um, it might be small, but here's the product. Uh, you can see it's got, you know, Extreme Pro, 95 megabytes per second, and you're going, oh, you know, I can do that. Uh, you know, 95 is larger than 50, so this should be fine, right? Well, no. No, it's not. Okay, you need to look at if you have it available on these cards, you need to look at this little thing. It looks like a square root almost. It's this 30. Okay, this is a newer thing. Um, this was not going on when I started buying these cards for doing video. 
Um, but if you're shooting 4K video, you need at least a V30 or this little three in here, okay? If you don't have that, you cannot shoot 100 megabit per second or 200 megabit per second video without possible issues, okay? So remember when we did that quick math, Okay, 50 megabytes per second. So this means we have to sustain 50 over a period of time to make sure that this card is writing everything that we need to. If you don't, you end up with dropped frames and other issues, okay? So this card is not going to be enough, theoretically, okay? I know that there's gonna be people who write down below go, oh, I use, you know, these cheap 32 gig uh, one cards and with a little eight in the circle and that means that it always works. No, it doesn't. You might be shooting like eight second clips or like, you know, little shots of something in your backyard. Professionally speaking and even semi-professionally speaking, if you are going to ride the line and if you use computers often, you realize that using it at full 100% capacity all the time is just like a car. If you slam the gas down all the time, all the time, you're gonna end up with it breaking a lot faster or some issues, okay? And that's the same thing with these cards. If you ride the line right at 30, or if you go over 30, it might work sometimes, and you might not have had an issue yet, but I can almost guarantee that when you do this professionally and you get a gig and you're being paid 5,000 bucks to do a five minute video, sometimes that dude, that's like easy work. But if you can't like sustain the right speed and you can't get that storage of that video onto the card properly, you're screwed and you're not gonna make your money, okay? You'll have to like reshoot it, which will make it where they don't wanna work with you again, etc. okay? So this card, the top one, number one seller, okay, is not going to be enough for a GH5 at 50 megabytes per second. A lot of these ones that are on the top of the list here ain't gonna cut it, okay? What we can do in B&H, we can go down to speed class, and there's V... You can go down to speed class, there's V30, 60, 90, okay? Let's just click on V90 and 60, okay? And now we see that you can get cards uh, for a bit more that will sustain the right speed for the GH5. Okay, so these I would, um, I'm not sure about Prograde, I've heard bad things about Prograde, okay, but these Angel Birds tend to work really well, um, uh, I don't know much about Delkins either, if it's Panasonic, obviously this will work, should work perfectly fine for the GH5, um, uh, yeah, so th there's a ton of cards that are available within this V60 to 90 uh, grade that you can use for the GH5. Okay, usually between 64 and 128 gigs. And we'll go back to that, okay? So let's go back to the Blackmagic Pocket. Now, let's just just look, okay? We're not gonna look at HD because if you're buying this camera, I would imagine you wanna shoot in 4K, all right? So let's just look at this, okay? If you want to shoot the full Cinema 4K, all right, which I recommend because it even if you're gonna do it in 4K, you can still like recrop if you want to, because you can move it left or right. If it's the final is gonna be in 38, 40, 20, 21, 60, you still have a little bit more room to move it around if you want. I'm really picky about like where the where somebody is positioned in my frame. So the, the more data I can get, I guess the better it is as far as how big the picture is. So I like this, okay? So let's just look at this, okay? ProRes Proxy, which is made to be a proxy file. If you don't know what that means, it means you use this to edit when you know you have like a RAW that is gonna be used for um, your actual stuff, okay? The lowest, the, lowest, um, the lowest flavor of ProRes, which is a proxy file, is 24.25 megabytes per second, okay? Then we make a significant jump to LT, probably my favorite of the Apple ProRes codecs. And I know I get made fun of for that and I don't care. So it's comparable to the GH5 and GH5S 50, 54.63. So the V60s are gonna give you enough to sustain the right speed just for the LT. One of the smallest codecs that ProRes offers. Just think about that. Think about how much data that is going in per second. 
okay? And as we go up the ProRes codex all the way to HQ, you're getting up into a significant amount of data per second compared to what people who are going to be buying this camera are likely to be used to, okay? Maybe that was confusing the way I said it. What I'm saying is that if you're coming from a Sony that shoots 100 megabits per second, uh, let's just do the math, right? Sony's shooting, the A7s are shooting 100 megabits per second. You're looking at 12.5 megabytes per second. So if you're coming from a Sony A7 S2 or whatever, and you're shooting 100 megabits per second, uh, or like G7 or, you know, whatever other camera that you might be using, you're looking at about half of what ProRes Proxy offers for data. That is significant. It's a significant jump, okay? And you're likely, if you're an IQ snob, which a lot of people tend to be, you're gonna wanna shoot way up here. And that's 272 megabytes per second, okay? That's insane. So as we saw before, you know, if you want a V90, which is likely unable to to sustain that write speed at all, you're looking at, you know, for two 128 gig cards, you're looking at spending 350 from Angel Bird, uh, of course that's to match the EVA 1, but you know, that's what you're going to be looking at, okay? And just think about this, here you have a 128 gig gigabyte card, it's a V90, you know that it's going to, you know, be able to do those higher rates, it's got a minimum write speed of 90. And a, ma and a sustained uh, write speed of 260. I always worry that it's not going to be fast enough. So let's imagine that this 128 gig card from Angel Bird would give us the write speed we need to do raw in uncompressed. Let's just take it from the top. Okay, now let's convert megabytes to gigabytes using this little conversion table from Google. You, so you're basically getting 0 0.272 gigabytes per second being taken up with data. So let's take 0.272 and let's multiply that by 60, 60 seconds. Okay, that's 16.32 gigs per minute, okay? So we're gonna take that 128 and divide by 16.32. So this will tell us how many minutes we get. Less than eight minutes per 128 gigabyte card. So that means that likely if you're shooting on a set, right? Let's say that you're not doing running gun style stuff. You're shooting on a set. I mean, swapping out the cards is not that bad. You just, you know, put in the one eight minutes in uh, cinema time, at least in my experience, is a lot of time. Uh, you know, you can spend hours shooting five minutes. So if you're trying to get the highest, highest quality image possible, and you're okay storing all this in you know, your drives and you can swap out cards pretty easily, then clearly this isn't gonna be a big issue for you. But if you're like a lot of other people who are gonna be using this camera for, I don't know, shooting little videos, maybe shooting uh, interviews, shooting vlogs, which would be, this camera seems like overkill to me for shooting vlogs. Um, if you're doing whatever, right, music videos, whatever it is that you might be shooting with this, this is probably not going to be enough. So, you know, you're going to probably, if you're going to be shooting raw, you're going to be using some kind of compressed version. There's 3.1 and 4.1 compressed. Uh, there's, if you look here, there's 3141 compressed RAWs, which you could probably use, which would be perfectly fine. I think that most people are going to live in here and in here for this camera, just personally. So if, if you're buying this camera and you're planning on shooting RAW, what I recommend is actually thinking about spending money on cards that are built more for doing this kind of thing. Okay, a good thing to look at is some CFast cards because their read and write speeds tend to be much, much faster, um, which is, and this is what people are using. They're more expensive, obviously, but they tend to work better in my experience. Yeah, you're spending $679.99, right? But um, the good thing is that 
you are more likely to have this thing um, sustain properly uh, for a good period of time. Um, you're, you're probably going to end up with this working out a lot better for you than something like an SD card. That's just my experience. Okay, so if, if this price tag is too much, right? The good thing about the Blackmagic Pocket is that it allows something really cool, which is all the different ways that you can store it. So here, um, you've got, of course, the CFast and the uh, SD card, right? But more important than that is you've got this USB out, which they're, sh they're showing the Samsung SSD T5 here. I'm assuming that if it's shown in their ads, then this is probably what they've tested it with. So I'm not endorsing the brand. It looks like Blackmagic is. So, and if you know anything about camera manufacturers and SD cards, hard drives, all that stuff, their recommendations are gonna be more important as far as brand and the type is gonna be way more important than anything I say or anybody on YouTube says or anybody on a forum says. They have tested it far more than any of us have. So if they're showing this one, this is probably the one that I'm gonna get if I'm gonna do this. So if we were to look on BNH again, uh, there's this Samsung 500 gigabyte T5 portable solid state drive, blue one, just like what's being shown right here. So it's the same one looking like. So if they're showing it on the Blackmagic website, it's probably gonna work out well. It's only, you know, $129.99 compared to the CFast cards, which can be like $1,000 for something similar, as far as the uh, storage amount. So to me, this might um, be, uh, for the cheap ones of us out there, this might be a good one to use. I recommend getting a solid state drive, not a spinning drive, um, I guess a normal drive because it won't have the stuff spinning inside. That's really it. Um, I hope that you guys learned a little bit. I hope I didn't ramble too much in this video. I just wanted to share what I feel about this and to help you make the right choice for whatever storage you're gonna use for this thing. It's gonna be cool to see what people make with this because it's really gonna put the capability of super high IQ from what I can see into the hands of regular consumers. Um, and I think that some consumers might be put off by a couple things uh, with the storage, uh, especially, and um, knowing what they can and can't do with it. And I'm just, you know, hoping that you take this to heart. If you're newer, I guess newish to video making and you don't really understand um, the importance of having a storage system that works properly all the time instead of only sometimes or, you know, possibly crapping out on you, then um, you might end up having problems. So I hope that, you know, you guys and gals all have learned from this know what kind of storage is going to work best for you. Um, definitely do all this yourself. Look at this website. Look at the specs. So that's it on this, and I, and I hope that you guys all learned a bit about storage and you understand that if, when you get this camera, if you want to get the highest IQ possible, what is going to be demanded of your, your hardware, not to mention your computer. I mean, this is just to, to record the stuff. But in addition to that, I, I hope that you found this informative. I hope it wasn't too long and boring. Um, but uh, there you go. Thanks a lot. Okay, if you stuck around, here's the bonus. Everything that we talked about, storage rates based on 30 frames per second. Do you think 60 FPS is going to be more demanding than this? I think so. Thank you.